Ireland's coastline. Monumental. Spectacular. Unique. Shaped by millions of years of rainfall and erosion, it's a national treasure. But one with a hidden story. There are 38 locations around the country that uh, raw sewage is being discharged into the environment and that covers the wastewater from about 88,000 people, so it's very significant. There has been a reduction in the number of discharges. We know that it'll be 2021 by the time most of them are done. We historically believed you could just put the waste into the rivers, into the sea, and it wasn't a problem. All waste should be treated before it's put back into the sea. I was born and reared here in this village. This was a sleepy little village with a beautiful coastline, so pure and so perfect. It was where we swam, it's where we fished. You have a main sewage pipe running through the main street of Liscanner, and then it was coming to a small holding tank just at the edge of the sea. And due to many, many people visiting the area, the holding tank couldn't hold, <laughs> hold it all, so it backed up. And not only had you in Main Street it coming out of the manholes, but also there was a hole in the pipe between the holding tank and the sea that actually caused a geezer of human excrement to rise up. Three officials came out from the county council and it blew into the air 22 feet. That shows you the pollution, the pressure that's going into the bay all the time. I have a lot of friends who are surfers, so one of them was really sick at the time and he wasn't sure why, and then I kind of joined the dots and was like, wow, this is actually a really serious issue. Bluntly speaking, people were swimming in sewage. They do ingest it and they do get those diseases. We would see a number of people on a regular basis who do come in with infectious illnesses related to the stomach and small bile, uh, and frequently we would see ear infections as well. I surfed um, actually behind a pier in Liscanner. There's a storm wave there and uh, just that night I spent like 12 hours in my toilet, sick. And my doctor then confirmed it two days later that I had a coli poison and I didn't even realise that there was raw sewage running into the water there. And it's just not, it's just not on. 1,500 wheelie bins of raw sewage has been discharged into Liscanner Bay twice a day, every single day. So it, this is an, a problem for the health of the marine environment, also for swimmers and surfers. It's light at the end of the tunnel and will ensure in the future that Liscanner Bay returns to what I remember as a child and how beautiful it was. Cork Harbour, at the mouth of the River Lee, has been a thriving port for centuries. Cove was the last port of call for the RMS Titanic before it set out across the Atlantic on its doomed maiden voyage. This was the natural position for a transatlantic liners. So all of the transatlantic liners between Liverpool in New York or Southampton in New York stopped at Cove. Cork Harbour is reported to be the second most beautiful natural harbour in the world. But it's well known that the effluent, the raw effluent is, is going into the harbour. When you're training long distance, you're swimming head down, you know, you might feed every hour, that's the only time you'll talk to people. It can be cold, um, and swimming in the winter certainly is, is definitely cold, but it makes you feel alive in a way that the pool never does. 
I moved to Cove about a year and a half ago um, and I bought my house because I can see the water right from my bedroom window. The day I actually went to view my house, there was a seal that I saw from the window and that just absolutely made up my mind that, yeah, this is the place for me. Right below my bedroom window, there's a, a sewage pipe and as of now, there is actively sewage going out into the water through that pipe and I just, I can't swim there. If there's magic on this earth, it's contained in water. You know, after going for a long swim in the sea, your body feels just fantastic. But you realize then after a while that your mind feels so much better as well. There's just something magic about it. I think it would be fantastic that people didn't need to have this knowledge of where the outfall pipes are. If people could just go and say, there's nice water, I wonder what it's like to swim there, I'm gonna go in for a swim. So a very simple solution to this is gather up the sewage and then pump it to a treatment plant and discharge it to sea. So what we did was we built it in reverse. We built the treatment plant first so that there was always somewhere for the sewage to go. And then using a drilled crossing to go under the estuary, like really deep, 30 metres deep under the estuary, so that we can bring the sewage from here over to the treatment plant in Shan Valley. So we'd have gone from having an equivalent of the amount of sewage that would fill 40,000 wheelie bins at the start, and we'll have that down to zero. So it'll take about two years for the harbour to regenerate, but you're going to start seeing an immediate difference in things like sewage litter because it's not going to be going straight into the harbour anymore. I just love getting up in the morning, watching the sun going up when I'm out in my boat, hauling pots. I, I just love it. Oh, I, I have some memories. We literally were able to go in to the water and kick the fish up the strand. Compare that to this year, and it's the worst year anybody has ever witnessed. Baby wipes, they're having a huge, huge impact. People are flushing them and they're almost indestructible. Any ropes that are in the water, it's like they have hands, you know, if they touch a rope, they're onto it, and you, you have to actually tear them off it. Uh, plastic is our greatest friend, but our greatest enemy. It's it's almost indestructible. If you dump plastic, it's, it's there for certainly a lot longer than you're going to live. It's normal that if people find a dead whale, uh, they are going to report it, a dead dolphin. But if they find a seabird, they, they think it's so common that they don't report it. And then we have all these birds dying and no one knows why. So I look at all the measurements and try to infer the cause of death. I look at the organ health of these birds and try to find out why they died. So you have a big piece of plastic here, broken down from something bigger. The same way that plastic bags remind birds of prey like jellyfish, baby wipes could remind them of other type of prey. They could get confused uh, thinking baby wipes or wipes floating at sea would be other types of prey. And these wipes, most of them, even though they look like a natural fabric, they are actually made of fibers of plastic. So they are definitely uh, becoming accessible for birds or other wildlife to ingest. If people want to use baby wipes, then put them into the rubbish bin, you know? Don't, don't flush them down the loo. Same with the cotton buds. I see that everywhere. Until something uh, on a higher level is done in relation to plastics and, and all that stuff and all the other problems that we have, then this is as much as we can do. If you think about it, if you pick up a piece of plastic and put it into a bag and bring it home, that's a bit of plastic that's not going to end up in the sea. And maybe that's a bit of plastic that's going to get caught in a bird's beak.
was designed for 1.64 million population equivalent and what's actually coming in the door at the moment is about 1.9 million population equivalent. So it is, it is really working very hard to treat the, the sewage that is coming in. Ring's End Treatment Plant processes 40% of the country's public wastewater. Here, debris, fats, oil and grease are removed from the wastewater before undergoing treatment. Once, the solid waste left behind was simply disposed of. These days, it's become a valuable asset. The material that remains in the wastewater, it is no longer a waste. It forms sludges. And these can be digested on the works, creating valuable fertilizer and creating gas through the digestion process that can create up to four megawatts of power from burning that biogas. So that's as much power as maybe would power a small to medium sized town in Ireland. With the plant operating at 16% over capacity, some nutrients in the incoming sewage are passing through the process. The solution is a major upgrade to increase the plant's capacity on a phased basis from now until 2025. When we have this built, it will certainly improve the quality of the effluent coming out. There has been a historical underinvestment in our, in our drinking water and our wastewater infrastructure over the years. So we're playing catch up really on a long period of underinvestment. is part of a system. So when we look at challenges our country is facing, and you look at things like the housing supply, you can't invest in one area and not be cognizant of the level of investment that you need to make in other areas like transport and water and electricity. Massive investments required in uh, water and wastewater treatment. So our key function really is to drive inefficient costs out while at the same time is to protect the public interest. How Ireland manages its wastewater is often dictated by the lie of the land. Flat plains, hilly ground, coastal terrain. Each area requires its own unique solution. Sometimes treating wastewater relies on advanced technology. Other times, nature itself can be harnessed to do the job. Wherever water slows down on its journey to the sea, a wetland may form. How these systems work is nicely demonstrated by looking at a small wetland system for effluence from a single house. The water comes from the house to a collection point and then flows to the first cell, then flows to the next cell. Transpiration from the plants reduces the water quantity. Here in County Waterford, a constructed wetland treats all the wastewater from the local village of Dunhill. It's a self-sustaining system, so it doesn't need any electricity um, or any pumping, and there's no moving parts, so it's very low in maintenance. The benefits to the community is it's keeping their river clean, that's the main benefit, and it also has the add-on benefit of being a beautiful natural environment. Mm -hmm. 